क्षण <laughs> නමුත් මේ රෝග ලක්ෂණ සියල්ලම පහළ වෙනකන් ඉඳලා ප්‍රතිකාර සඳහා යන එක හොඳ දෙයක් නෙමෙයි. එතකොට සමහර වෙලාවට පෙනහල ගොඩක් තුවාල වෙලා බෙහෙත් දීලා ගොඩ යන්න බැරි වෙන්න පුළුවන්. ෂර් රෝගී මුල්ම රෝග ලක්ෂණේ සුළු කැස්සක් නිසා තැනින් තැන ගිහින් බෙහෙත් අරගෙන ලෙඩේ උත්සන්න කරගන්න එපා. රෝග ලක්ෂණ පහළ වුණු ගමන්ම පරීක්ෂණ කරගන්න. කෙලින්ම ප්‍රතිකාර ගෙන රෝගී නිත්‍යාවටම සුව කරගන්න. සෞඛ්‍ය මාත්‍යංශය සමගින් ෂර් රෝග මර්ධන හා ලය රෝග පිළිබඳ ජාතික වැඩසටහනේ පණ විඩයක්. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Today we are here to commemorate the World TB Day 2021. So let me start like this. We are running out of time to fulfill global commitment to end TB. Even though the current focus is mainly on COVID-19, we must not ease up the fight against TB. The clock is ticking. That is the theme of the World TB Day 2021. Due to the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic situation, the National TB Commemoration Day is a webinar collaboratively organized by National Program for Tuberculosis Control and Chest Diseases and Sri Lanka Medical Association. Starting the ceremony, I cordially invite President Sri Lanka Medical Association Dr. Padma Gunaratna, Deputy Director General Public Health Services 1, Ministry of Health Dr. A. S. M. Arnold, and Director, National Program for Tuberculosis Control and Chest Diseases, Dr. Niru, uh, Dr. Hemant Hera, to the head table. Thank you very much. I now cordially invite Dr. Padma Gunaratne, President of Sri Lanka Medical Association, to welcome the gathering. Over to you, Madam. Good afternoon to all of you, um, Dr. Hemant Hera. director national program for tuberculosis control and chest diseases dr s m arnold deputy director general public health services uh, and all other uh, distinguished invitees uh, at the outset uh, let me thank uh, all these uh, organizers of this program on behalf of the sri lanka medical association for arranging this type of an academic program to commemorate this important day the world tb day 2021 on the theme the clock is ticking i just was wondering why they decided on this clock probably what they are trying to tell definitely is that i mean it's at the verge of the blasting Uh, so as medical professionals we all know that what a problem tuberculosis for the community and for the medical profession is uh, i as a neurologist uh, uh, who had been practicing for last about more than 3 decades i know how tb affects the nervous system of individuals how they present and how difficult for us to diagnose and uh, what a problem of not having the test that are sensitive enough to picking up cases early and then what disastrous complications the disease cause for patients and how much are, do die and how much are left with residual disability uh, so it is a uh, uh, sort of a Uh, so much an enormous task once we get a patient with tuberculosis in the nervous system generally they uh, stay with us for more than 2 months and then even if, even if we transfer to valisera much later and then they come back with many residual disabilities or a significant proportion about 30% of our patients died and another 30% were left with residual disability uh then we know that how it affects the rest of the our systems i mean the lungs and the uh, 
uh, any any other extrapulmonary tuberculosis and the problems of multidrug resistant tuberculosis and then on top of that the the most disastrous issue was that during our covid era i mean we know that the covid affected people beyond the effect of the problems that are caused by the virus it did affect for economies as well as the social life of individuals so for the medical profession you know that how it affected and it disrupted most of our non covid uh, management of patients so it seriously affected the patients who are on anti tb drugs because it disrupted the the covid disrupted the services and these patients found difficult to reach for their supply of drugs and with that when we when there is a disturbance for the drug treatment we know that the uh, infection that reemerges is more often resistant to anti tuberculosis drugs so it is in that context and also we know that tb affects countries like ours i mean particularly poor as well as the overcrowded community uh, so that they need attention and uh, uh, and i mean obviously uh, it is preventable it's not only treatable and it's preventable because when you go beyond i mean sort of european countries you know that there is so difficult to find a case of tb so what it means is that sort of from a country we should be able to reach a day that we have to be say that it is sort of eradicated so it is in that context that the uh, uh, the national program for tuberculosis control tuberculosis control and chest diseases organized this academic program to mark the world tb day 2021 uh so i uh, congratulate for them i congratulate them uh for this uh, uh, initiating this worthy uh, academic program and i also thank all who join here in person as well as online to make this program a great success and uh, i welcome all of you on behalf of the sri lanka medical association uh to this academic program and i wish Uh, a great success for this program thank you for your patient oyala dannoda punchi apata share oge hadenawa kiyala godak kulawata punchi apata wedi hidiyo tama roge hadenne punchi lamainge roga lakshana wedi hiti obata wada wenas sati dikagata wada pavathina una digu kalina kassa bara aduwima niyamita lesa bara wedi nowima pratijeevaka walata sanipa nowana pneumonia wa sanipa nowana aduma महानसी गति कम में लिख व्यासीली अड़ू बाबर मैं लक्षण थी नवन एक मिनट में उबे दरुआ दिसरी लाइस साहनी ढो लंगमर राजे रोहल टक गिने अन्न वैडिंग टी ओबा शेयर हो गये ना लगी ना आश्रय करने पुंजी आप वो परीक्षा कर गने अमत के गराने का लमा शेयर हो गये वेल की मिट दाय क्यों हेमंत Director, National Program for Tuberculosis Control and Chest Diseases, for address the gathering. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, Dr. Mahendra Anal, Deputy Director General, Public Health Services One of the Ministry of Health. Dr. Padma Gunratna, uh, President of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. All distinguished invitees and participants of this uh, very important occasion. as we are commemorating the world tb day i am indeed happy and honored to be here to address you those who are present here as well as those who are joining us virtually uh, to discuss very important matters related to uh, tuberculosis especially the current situation which is complicated by the covid in sri lanka 
in this regard i have been over the past 2 3 days visiting many media stations and also i have giving i have been giving video clips voice cuts and several other messages to both print and electronic media and i have been giving so many messages especially addressing the uh, general public uh, to encourage their or enhance their participation in this endeavor of controlling tb in sri lanka however there was a small message that i was little bit reluctant to discuss in all of those for our uh, occasions but today i think this is the best time to discuss that secret or thing that i did not discuss with the public that is the medical professions role in early diagnosis and treatment of tuberculosis we know that there are multiple factors in controlling the success story of sri lanka for being a at least a low burden country and the failures or the challenges that we are having as a country to reach the target of eliminating tb within the stipulated time period in this regard the health profession required to play a very important role and again this need to be highlighted but i always try to confine myself to medical professionals in most occasions so that uh, rather than discussing this openly with the public but we know that in most of the places among other many factors the delay in diagnosing tuberculosis is very important factor that hinders the control activities for which i think general medical practitioners need to play a very important role by suspecting tb as early as possible and also making sure that the patients are complying with the uh, the the stipulated or the required guidelines and the advice given by the medical profession by making sure that they are properly communicated and then the ensuring their compliance by taking the treatment and also coming back for treatment or for the relevant investigations for all these things i think the medical profession need to uh, act in a probably in an innovative way to make sure that the disease is controlled or the largest number of cases are detected as early as possible so having given this message for the medical profession i believe that many of the people who are here as well as those who have joined virtually are belongs to the medical profession so passing that message is i think one of the most important thing uh, at this occasion so having said that i would like to thank the sri lanka medical association madam and your staff and all other members and the council of the sri lanka medical association association for giving this opportunity to Mm, uh, have this event in this place with your collaboration and also the other participants including the who the our uh, college of pulmonologists and also college of microbiologists college of community physicians and several other organizations who are with us as well as the uh, national program of, of, of the std aids control program with, with whom we are working very closely and also all the consultants belongs to the public health respiratory uh, general physicians and other uh, laboratory uh, uh, professionals everybody who are contributing to this um, uh, very important endeavor of controlling t 
TB in Sri Lanka. And so having said that, I would like to uh, conclude my opening remark. Thank you very much. Niamakala Ausha, the Niverdi Matrave, Niamita Kale Tula Nokadwa Genimin, Sheroga Karka Vishabija, Sampur Nima Vinashakar, Rogi Nita Damasuka Kataki Pratikara Paraharimin, Bahu Ausha the Pratirodi, Sheroga Tiviaki Esse Vohut, Vedi Ausha the Pramana, Dirga Kali Nama Labaginim at Sidwevi Rogi Maran Tikavi, Marne in the Pavaki Lever in Pulva Rogi in the Akanda Pratikara Genimata, Api Saum Sahai Vimu Selam Aushadha Sevavan, District Lies Hain in Ha, Raja Rohalul in Nomile Sheroge Sri Lanka in Turan Krima to Uradu Sauke Matan Shesamagin, Sheroge Mardanha, Lairog Bilbal Jatk Vatasatani Panavidak. Yes, tuberculosis can be completely cured by drug adherence. Thank you very much, Dr. Hemant Herat, Director of NPTCCT. Now I cordially invite Dr. S.M. Arnold, Deputy Director General, Public Health Services 1, Ministry of Health, to address the gathering. Over to you, sir. President SLMA, Director Dr. Hemant Herat, and all the other ladies and gentlemen. I thank you for inviting for this important program. And today we are commemorating the National TB Day. So when we take uh, tuberculosis, I think it is a very important disease condition with regard to our country, uh, with regard to the public health sector, where we, we have achieved a lot and there are much more to be achieved. And in order to achieve our targets, we have to do certain, certain things. And this awareness is one of the things, awareness of the medical profession, as well as through the medical profession, the general public is very, very important. I'm telling this because through this awareness only, uh, the patient detection, the patients with uh, signs and symptoms will be coming to the uh, healthcare services. Through that, we, we can improve the case detection. So that is also very important that otherwise, if the patients are not coming to, to be the, to the health, uh, healthcare centers, for the, for the to the healthcare providers, then the detection will be low. Then if the detection is low, that means in the community, the patients will be there. Then through these patients, what will happen is the disease will be spreading. So if we don't address this important aspect, uh, we will not be able to go for our target. So I think we will have to do simple things with regard to the treatment, Yes, we, we are having the current treatment, everything, the drug supply is there, those aspects are there. So we have to get down the uh, patient to the treatment centers as well as uh, it is very, very important that through the ground level, through the public health staff, through the MOH staff, that we do the contact tracing and do the, the the detect cases among them also. So with regard to the public health aspect, I think the, this is a very, very important uh, program where we will be able to achieve so many uh, things. So with regard to that, I think uh, the medical profession, right, as uh, we as medical profession, we, we have got a huge role to play. I can see a lot of public health uh, persons are there. You all also have to play a huge role, thereby supporting the curative sector. So we will have to work hand in hand. And through that only we, we, we have achieved these our targets. So I'm very happy to be here uh, for this program, to this webinar. And we are using this due to COVID. So the new technology, we, so it has come part and partial to our normal uh, way of communication. So this also we are using. And the other thing I want to emphasize is that uh, now about one year period, 
now we have been concentrating and pooling our resources everything only basically for covid so in addition to that the lockdowns and everything was there so we all know that our other control programs have got affected so this cannot be going on like this so now yes we 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 will have to live with covid for some period of time but now we have to uh, go on with our routine programs the control program we have to emphasize or give much attention to the, those programs so i think there is a about one year backlog is there right to do so many activities we we will have to do so we have to accelerate things otherwise what will happen is if we like just go on like this and pay all the attention to covid what will happen is the achievements that we have got with regard to this disease control program including the tb and the other thing will be reversed right and the other thing is that it will take lot of time to again put this system back into normal and uh, take achieve our the 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 targets that we had planned so i kindly request you all uh, to uh, concentrate pay more attention to this program the control activity the, the treatment all those things and uh, try to achieve our plan target so from the ministry of side from the public health side we are with you and that is our thinking also so i seek your support uh, to implement our normal programs thank you oba dannawada sharoge bowenne roge ko kahina vita ho kivisena vita pitawana binditi samaga roga karaka visa bijaya usma genime di sharira gathi wen bawa ඒ නිසා මේ වැලඳීමේ වැඩිම අවධානම තියෙන්නේ තමන්ගේ සමීපතමයන්ට. ෂේ රෝගී වැලඳුණු පසු තමන්ගේ නිවසියන් විතරක් නෙමෙයි. තමන්ගේ සමීපතම ආශ්‍රිතයෙන් වත් දිස්ත්‍රික් ලයසානයට ගෙනවිත් පරීක්ෂා කරගත යුතුයි. මම රියදුරේ මට ෂේ රෝගී හැදුණා. මගේ නිවස සමාජිකයන් විතරක් නෙවෙයි. මම පදවන කාර්යාල ප්‍රවාහන සේවා රථයේ ගමන් කරන අය. ඒ වගේම මගේ ආශ්‍රිතයින් සියල්ලක්ම ෂේ රෝගී සඳහා පරීක්ෂා කළා. निवसे इन गोडक वयस्कत भूतगल पुंची दरुण कुतर प्रायोगिक अपासुदा तिबुन क्षय रोग सन्धा परीक्षा करम समीपत्म सुर कि क्षय रोगे पेतरी वलकमु क्षय रोगे तव दुर्ट बेवी मठो लज्जावट कारुवे क्षय रोगे परंपरावीन परंपरावटेन रोगे कुदे बिसी प्रतिकार मगेन क्षय रोगे निट्टावट मुसुक पुलवा सौख्य मतंशय समगिन शेरोग मर्दन हा लायरोग बिलबंद जातक वटस धानी पन विडयाक थैंक यू वेरी मच डॉक्टर एस एम मानोल फॉर दोस वैल्यूएबल वर्ड्स वी ऑल जस्ट वाच द इंपोर्टेंस ऑफ कांटेक्ट स्क्रीनिंग एंड सोशल स्टिग्मा आई मस्ट अगेन रिमाइंड दैट दीस ऑडियो वीडियो क्लिप्स आर काइंडली स्पोंसर्ड बाय द वर्ल्ड हेल्थ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नाउ लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट एजेंडा आइटम I would now like to invite consultant community physician Dr. Sumudu Hevage to speak about the epidemiology of tuberculosis and its implications on tuberculosis control in Sri Lanka. Over to you, Dr. Sumudu. Thank you, Hiruni. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm very honored to be here representing the National C- Control Program for Tuberculosis uh, in Sri Lanka on this very important occasion. um my task today would be to discuss the epidemiology of tb in sri lanka and its implications um on tb control activities with you all um so um as i would start any lecture um since it would be very boring to listen to a one way communication um i'm sure these questions are very familiar with the audience who are physically present here because they are always uh, involved with the uh, tb care provision I invite the audience join who have joined us uh, online to take five seconds and think of some answers to these questions. Here we will discuss at the end of the presentation. So, actually, how many adults are diagnosed with TB per day in Sri Lanka, uh, and also how many children are diagnosed with TB, and how many TB patients die a day? Just for your brainstorming. So, if we start with the global picture. Um, 
the Southeast Asia region where we live caters for the like the is the home for more than one third of the global TB population. Uh, as you all can see in the map, all the countries other than Sri Lanka and Maldives are highlighted in dark pink, indicating that the caseload is more than above 100 per 100,000 population. However, Sri Lanka and Maldives being the, um, having the lowest rates in the region, uh, we are uh, having less than 100, per, 100 TB cases per 100,000 population, meaning that if we select 100,000 uh, Sri Lankans here and there, there would be 65 TB patients in that population. However, um, if we focus on these WHO estimates versus the actual case detection in Sri Lanka, the topmost yellow color line will indicate the upper limit of this estimation, the 95% confidence interval, and the dotted uh, um, uh, black line in the middle is the estimate uh, the WHO has given us, the 65 per 100,000 population. The green line is the lower limit, uh, whereas the lowest orange color line will indicate the actual case notification rates in Sri Lanka. As you all can see, we have not even reached the lowest limit, the lower limit of the estimation given to us by the WHO. Um, so what does this mean in actual numbers? If you can see this graph um, where we depict the TB case detection throughout the period from 2005 to two, uh, 2020 last year, um, you all can see that there are um, uh, fluctuations throughout, but since 2015, the cases detected with TB has steadily declined, maybe except in 2018, and there's a steep decline from 2019 to 2020. As we all know, this is uh, mostly due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which has disrupted the public, the general public's uh, accessibility for TB care services. And not only that, most of our service provisions were also um, affected negatively due to this, um, uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And also here I would like to highlight that uh, all types of TB cases, the new cases, bacteriologically confirmed, as well as clinically diagnosed, and also the extra pulmonary TB cases have gone down. The, uh, the, what does this mean in uh, the, what, what is the implication this uh, epidemiological data brings us, uh, whether we can be, uh, we need to uh, look into the facts and see whether we can, whether this depicts the real decline in TB burden in Sri Lanka, or does it mean something else? So um, if we move on to this slide where we have compared the TB burden with other common communicable diseases in Sri Lanka, here I have given data for 2020. As you all can see, COVID-19, the commonest, uh, followed by dengue, and also the third bar is for leptospirosis, and the tuberculosis stands at the fourth commonest communicable disease in Sri Lanka. But as we all know, 2020 is an exceptional year where we have been hit very hard, badly with uh, COVID-19. So if we go to the pre-COVID era, this graph would change. The first bar COVID-19 will be out of the picture. And also uh, after dengue, dengue will be the highest uh, number of uh, cases from a communicable disease in Sri Lanka. Uh, but the TB will be moved to second position. Because the, throughout the period, uh, we have been the like we have been reporting more than eight thousand cases. It has gone down eight thousand only in twenty twenty. So uh, if we talk about pre COVID data, TB will be the second commonest communicable disease reported in Sri Lanka. So what does this implies to our decision makers and policymakers um, when we allocate? finite resources for our infinite health demands, this will be the, the most important factor, the case burden we should be considering uh, in our resource allocations. So when we take, if we take one step further and look at this case load more closely, this graph gives you the idea of how these TB patients have distributed like they are, where they where we can find them in our country 
as you all can see, uh, one fourth, a quarter of our patients are located in Colombo, uh, closely followed by Gampa, and then districts like Kandy and Kaluthara. Um, so districts uh, from northern and eastern provinces like Ampara, Kilinochi, Vaunia, Mulathiu, and Mana reports less than 100 patients for the whole year. Whereas in Colombo, they cater for more than 100 patients per month. So this implies again the importance of allocating resources and also providing care services to our patients. So where should we focus? So um, again, if we look at this important epidemiological distribution of age and sex among our TB patients, if you focus on the line graph onto your left, you all can see that the risk of developing active TB disease increases with your age. The more you grow older, the more you are at risk. However, uh, the, this risk is more for males, depicted by the blue color line. The risk of catching TB as you grow older is more for males, uh, whereas for females, it remains more or less the same. And um, the pie chart onto my right-hand side will tell you that consequently in 2020, two thirds of our patient population were males and one third were females. So this picture is not the same for children. If you again look at the line graph for the pediatric cohort less than 15 years of age, you, uh, for some unknown reason, the, uh, the red line depicting girls, uh, they, uh, there are more TB patients of all forms uh, compared to uh, boys. So when we focus on the pediatric case detection, this line graph is for the last 10 years from 2010 to 2020. Um, similar to our adult case detection, pediatric TB cases detection have been declining gradually and very sharply from 2019 to 2020. For the first time, it has gone down below the level of 200 cases. And the WHO estimates that child TB cases to be approximately 6% of all TB cases in any country. This figure for our country, Sri Lanka, has never been like, we have never achieved that figure. For the 2018, it has only been 2.9%. 2019, gone up to 3.1%. But again, in 2020, has declined to 2.6%. So uh, this pediatric cases, is that really the TB is becoming less among children? Or again, are we not detecting them properly? Uh, again, if you look at the district distribution of these pediatric cases, uh, Colombo is at the um, uh, reports the highest case load again, uh, followed by Candy and Gampa, which is similar to our adult cases. However, if you look at these uh, districts um, marked by the red arrow, Ratnapura, um, Hambantota, and Gaul where the adult TB cases are not very um, high, they have detected uh, a fairly larger number of pediatric TB cases compared to other districts. So what does that imply? We have to think whether, is it the epidemiology of the disease only, or are there any other personal or um, uh, service availability factors affecting the TB case diagnosis? pediatric case diagnosis. So possibilities why this TB case load is reducing over the years. Can we be happy because we are, our control measures are working well and it, they are effective, so we are controlling TB? Or whether we should worry because we are not trying enough, whether we are not uh, detecting cases enough and the effort is less. The, Conclusion, uh, the first conclusion will only be um, achieved if we exclude the second one. It's a matter of excluding the second one. If we are satisfied with our case finding only, we can say happily that we are successfully controlling TB in Sri Lanka. So as in any other communicable disease, we all know that detecting um, patients early and treating them early is the most important factor in controlling a communicable disease. For TB, it says 
one person with TB can um, infect 10 to 15 other people during the course of a single year. So it is a matter of catching these people early and treating them, which will lead to successful control of the disease in, in the country. So um, let's have a look at our TB case finding efforts. Um, when the patient, uh, um, when a patient with presumptive symptoms of TB, according to one of our researchers we have conducted last year by the program, we now know that 61% of them go to state healthcare facility and 39, the rest will go to a private healthcare facility, a private hospital or majority, 70% to a general practitioner. So in this, uh, if we focus on the state hospital OPD level first, um, the presumptive TB patient detection and referral for diagnosis by doctors at the OPD level is not satisfactory. According to the data we have at the central level, uh, we are requested, we have requested the OPD doctors to refer at least 2% of these OPD attendees for the, uh, those who are presumptive cases for uh, sputum uh, smear testing. Uh, however, according to the data at our central level, majority of hospitals, I would say 99%, the case referral have never been 2%. It has always been point something that is less than 1%. Occasionally, we come across a one or two hospital which, has, um, re which have referred uh, more than 1% of OPD attendees for sputum testing. And also, uh, it is unfortunate that uh, sputum microscopy at OPD level is not available in major hospitals, many hospitals actually, including major hospitals. For example, NHSL, Colombo North Teaching Hospital, Columbus South Teaching Hospital, except for the chest clinic at the Kalubovina. Uh, we do not have any microscopy centers where uh, the patient can go and produce a sputum sample and hand it over to uh, the center and um, go back home. Similarly, lack of access to chest x-ray at OPD level in majority of hospitals by doctors is another major bottleneck uh, for, our, uh, for the uh, diagnosis of TB as an outpatient. So if we move on to the private sector, uh, similarly, mm, presumptive TB patients, uh, they are, the threshold of detection, the threshold of uh, suspicion has been very low, which is, uh, which is uh, mm, proved by this data we have collected through our survey last year. This is uh, from our care pathways and care delays among sputum positive pulmonary TB patients in Sri Lanka. These patients are later uh, have been diagnosed as TB and they have been um, undergoing the TB treatment. So the percentages I have given here are for presumptive TB patients who were symptomatically managed without investigating at the first consultation. So if you first look at the state sector, these percentages vary for teaching hospital 20%, district general hospital 40%, base hospitals 24%, district hospitals 48%, and primary medical care institutions 55%. Uh, again, at the private sector, general practitioners 69%, private hospital OPDs 33%, and private consultants 7%. So all these patients, we have not detected them at the very first encounter with the healthcare providers, and they have had to come back again and again for care and uh, for uh, um, TB care uh, services. And also, uh, according to this study we have conducted, we got to know that there is a diagnosis delay, especially among the government hospitals uh, and among private providers. As you all can see, the median duration to diagnosis from the first point of care at a district chest clinic would be only two days. That meaning that within two days, when a patient visits the district chest clinic, at the second day, on the second day, there would be a diagnosis of whether TB or not. However, this duration for government hospital is seven days, meaning one week. And for private providers, it's two whole weeks, the median. Then, if you move on with case finding efforts, diagnostic test utilization is another factor we need to consider. Uh, 
both the number of diagnostic tests and also the use of sensitive tests, available sensitive tests. So if we focus on the uh, numbers of diagnostic tests we have used in an ideal setting where all the machines are working and where human resources are at the optimal levels, the gene expert capacity in Sri Lanka, we have the capacity to perform 108,000 uh, tests per year. However, uh, these data are from central level in 2020, we have conducted 30,000 uh, odd numbers, which is better than 2019 figure, which is 26,971. There are many factors behind these figures, including human resource availability and uh, machinery breakdowns. Uh, and also the second point would be uh, whether we are using available sensitive test as the first line diagnostic test. Uh, the uh, gene expert testing is well known to be a more sensitive test than as a, uh, fast bacilli testing for microscopy. However, uh, it, we, are use, we are not using it an, uh, as the first line diagnostic test throughout the country at the moment. Uh, then, uh, with regard to case findings, screening of high risk population is another important area where we focus on selected uh, populations who are known to be at risk of developing tuberculosis. Then we go and screen these apparently healthy populations to detect um, TB cases early. So these um, household and close contacts of diagnosed TB patients are one such important cohort. However, if you can look at the figures in 2019, we have only um, out of the identified household contacts, we have only tested less than 50% to see whether they have TB or not. And also in other high risk groups such as prisoners and um, uh, healthcare workers or other um, populations where we have uh, identified to be at high risk of uh, developing TB, uh, when we analyze the data, we realize that screening method, methods are not the optimal methods that are being used. Probably, mostly, they are symptomatic screening followed by uh, sputum AFB, uh, uh, whereas uh, chest X-ray and expert utilization is very minimal. So if we move, move back to that question, should we be happy because TB is actually being controlled due to our um, control measures, or should we be worried because uh, our case finding efforts are less? Uh, the answer has been given in the uh, interim review. This review was conducted by a team of international and national consultants, experts. In that report, which is available at our website, uh, may I briefly quote, case finding efforts should be urgently intensified through greater use of chest X-ray screening for symptomatic patients. The plan phased rollout of gene expert as the first line diagnostic test should continue, supported by the establishment of an adequate specimen transport system. The program should also focus on increasing referrals to district chest clinics from all the initial points of contact, especially base hospitals and private practitioners where our TB patients are going for care mostly. So um, I think that provides the answer uh, we need to um, improve our case finding efforts. So moving on to the mortality, uh, how serious is TB globally? Apparently tuberculosis is the top infectious disease killer in the world. And it has been well known now, uh, it is more dangerous than the famous COVID-19 um, disease. So if we move on to our local scenario, uh, the blue graph, the graph onto your uh, left-hand side is the one I have shown earlier, the case numbers for comparison reasons. The uh, graph on your right-hand side with the red color bars depicts the numbers of deaths among patients with common communicable diseases in Sri Lanka. So if you just compare the two graphs, the tuberculosis in the first graph, you can see as the fourth, uh, leading um, fourth leading uh, communicable disease. However, death wise, if you consider uh, the, the, uh, 602 TB patients have died in 2020, uh, whereas COVID-19, the numbers 
are 199. This is for 2020. Uh, dengue, only 35, and leptospirosis, 88. Uh, I'm sorry, you can't see the very low end of the slide, which says, um, uh, as of 9.20 uh, a.m. today, the total COVID-19 deaths reported in Sri Lanka was only 552. This was since uh, last year, March 11th, where the very first case of COVID-19 was reported from Sri Lanka. So that is more than one year, yeah, more than one, almost one year period. So if you can just compare the two figures, TB still causes more deaths than COVID-19, more than even COVID-19 in Sri Lanka. Um, so um, if we consider the TB treatment outcomes for the 2019 year, uh, our treatment success rate was 84.2%. Uh, that is those who have been declared as cured and also treatment completed. And uh, like I said earlier, um, 602 patients have died, giving us a 7.1 death rate of all TB cases. Um, this figure for comparison reasons is uh, um, a bit higher than what is expected. So we have conducted this TB death analysis to see who is dying and uh, rather than how, uh, when they are dying. So this 2018 death analysis tells us that uh, because this definition of a TB death is uh, any death among a, a patient who is on treatment for TB. So it could be or could not be due to tuberculosis. Uh, according to our result, uh, results of our analysis, only one third of these patients have been, uh, um, the cause of death have been identified as tuberculosis. Um, uh, others likely to be due to old age and other comorbidities. 55% uh, of our deaths was reported among more than 65 years of age cohort, as you all can see in the graph. Uh, so uh, it means that half of our patients who died were elderly patients. So this epidemiological data implies that we need to be more careful about our elderly patients who are at a higher risk of um, death during the TB treatment period. And also we got to know that 70% of our deaths, uh, these patients have had any sort of comorbidities, the commonest being diabetes. So this gives the very important implication that uh, our care providers need to not only so this slide um, uh, gives us the um, uh, district distribution of our uh, drug-resistant TB cases. We have detected 18. Uh, so we have, uh, we, uh, our country is very lucky to record such a low number of drug-resistant cases. Uh, the majority, again, six cases were reported from Colombo, followed by Gampaha with four cases, and Candy and Batiklo, two each. So again, this uh, gives us the, this implies where we need to th um, think about uh, uh, patients who are prone for drug resistance and also how to provide care for these patients, which areas, which districts to focus on. So this is this um, piece of graph I extracted from the case detection uh, graph I showed you earlier. Uh, however, this, uh, whether, um, even though these numbers are reducing, even in the retreatment category, Previously treated patients, the numbers have dropped from 604 to 567. So um, although the numbers have fallen from 604 to 567, when we take it as a proportion, the previously treated cohort, uh, the proportion has increased from 2019 to 2020, from 71% to 78%. So this has serious implication, even though we um, report very low numbers of drug resistant uh, tuberculosis patients in our country. This um, gives us a hint that we should not relax our efforts uh, or our providing our services or thinking on these drug resistant cases. So uh, we, uh, let's move on to this very important strategy, a preventive strategy, latent TB infection management. Um, it is known that uh, one fourth of uh, the world population is infected with this bacteria. And uh, according to the data, international data, it is said that 10 to 15% of these patients who are infected will develop tuberculosis at any point of their lifetime. So it has been 
now identified as a very effective strategy to provide them to um, identify these patients with latent TB and to provide them with prophylactic treatment. It not only on, from the health aspects, not only improving the health outcomes of the patient, but also on the um, economy of the uh, patient, the society, and also on the country. So this graph, a line graph, familiar to some of you, gives us the, uh, these are the modeling graphs. This gives us the impact of TB preventive therapy on the TB incidence and mortality in Sri Lanka. The pink line tells us if we, um, if we implement these strategies in our countries, how the TB incidence and TB mortality would drop over a period of time. So based on this international evidence, uh, the College of um, with the Sri Lanka College of Pulmonologists, uh, we have compiled these national guidelines on uh, latent TB infection management, which will be um, uh, launched later. And then uh, we plan to implement these services to our population uh, from the latter part of this year. So uh, with all these uh, implications of this epidemiological data, we have compiled our national strategic plan 2021 to 2025. And here I have only uh, given the list of uh, objectives we are planning to um, um, achieve throughout this period. Uh, the first objective is to find and successfully treat on average between 21 to 25, 10,000 cases of TB annually, including 600 children. And then to successfully treat on average between this same period, 11,600 eligible cases with TB preventive treatment, that is for our LTBI management and then to properly engage the private sector in TB diagnosis and care. You know, the, you saw the evidence previously and to improve referrals from the private sector up to 30% of all cases. At the moment, it is below 10%. Um, then the fourth objective is to strengthen the monitoring and evaluation of TB control activities at all level. And then to significantly increase the quality and quantity of operational research, because with this evidence, based on this evidence only, we can plan uh, preventive services effectively. And finally, to significantly improve the organization and management of and control of TB in Sri Lanka. So basically that um, I hope I described the epidemiology uh, of TB in Sri Lanka and how it affects our TB control activities in the country. And I promised to give answers to some questions at the beginning of the lecture. So some of you might be surprised to know that every day in Sri Lanka, 20 persons are diagnosed with TB and two, people, two TB patients die. And also every couple of days, a child under 15 years of age is diagnosed with TB in our country. So as a take home message, this will be, uh, how can you help to achieve NTB targets in Sri Lanka? Maybe as a um, care provider, a doctor, a consultant, a medical officer, a district tuberculosis control officer, or maybe as a um, family member who are providing doc services for a patient, uh, or maybe as a leader uh, at the uh, top level, planning and implementing these preventive care services to our public, or even maybe as a general citizen, when we go out of the hospital and out of the office, we are just another citizen in the country, in our society. So as, a, as, as such a person, uh, how can we help improving these achieving uh, NTB targets um, in Sri Lanka? Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sumudu Hevagi, for that very informative speech. Okay, now let's uh, listen to a very special within the song. <laughs> Bobinava, 
रोगी के ने कुन का ही तुम्हित की विषय न बिट पिट बनवा निरोगी के ने कुगे पेन हालु तुलट के आरिंगन वा क्रमयन बैक्टीरिया व अब हम लेड करवन वा tuberculosis and its prevention this song was composed free of charge by a special team our special thank goes to all of them vocals and rhythm by dr dananjay manamperi he is a demonstrator at the faculty of medicine university of ruhuna percussion bass guitar and violin by han aberatna and lyrics by dr amali sena naik from the national tb control campaign a huge round of applause goes to all of them for this beautiful piece of work now i would like to invite dr bodhika samadasekara consultant respiratory physician district general hospital gampaha to address the gathering dr samadasekara is well experienced in handling and managing the tb patients in the covid-19 pandemic so dr samadasekara will speak about the uh, obstacles in management of tb during covid era over to you dr samadasekara good afternoon uh... ladies and gentlemen uh, firstly let me thank the uh, national program for tb control and chest diseases and sri lanka medical association for for giving me this opportunity to give a small talk on uh, obstacles in management of tb in covid era uh, let me also congratulate the program for organizing this uh, uh, interesting event uh, during this, this difficult period 
uh, we all are facing with uh, as medical professions like we all are facing uh, a lot of difficulties in organizing things uh, this event is nicely organized uh, let me congratulate uh, the program and the ceremony so so uh, i would like to take you back to the history uh, at the dawn of uh, 2020 uh, uh, after uh, announcing covid-19 as a pandemic by the who uh, first case was diagnosed in sri lanka uh, uh, from a tourist uh, foreigner uh, in around february and after that, uh, around mid of the March, uh, March 10th, 11th, around that area, like uh, those days, like uh, the first Sri Lankan case was identified, again, a tourist guide. And thereafter, few waves were there, here and there. But uh, hospitals, uh, the, uh, the airport was closed, uh, schools were closed, uh, country was in a lockdown situation. And uh, we could manage the first wave very well. However, uh, we have forgotten, uh, forgotten the basics again, and near normal or uh, near normal became a normal situation again. And uh, in around uh, October, uh, first of October, uh, actually in my ward, like uh, we did, uh, there were like a lot of uh, cases in neighboring countries, increasing number of cases, and. Uh, we, there were lengthy discussion among the pharmacologists that there can be cases, uh, even our college. And uh, so uh, we thought of doing uh, with the epidemiologist uh, unit, along with the epidemiology unit, we thought of uh, screening, uh, do some random samples in ward patients. So as a result of that, uh, uh, this respiratory ward, uh, this general hospital Gampa, we identified a uh, first patient of the second wave. Uh, and uh, so from a uh, garment factory worker and thereafter uh, uh, many other clusters were identified like uh, fish market cluster and the cases uh, were increased abruptly so uh, and as a result of that like we also had to undergo uh, quarantine for 15 days uh, then now uh, we have uh, 90,200 cases uh, as of uh, two days back so we have passed china and we have 289, uh, 2,895 active cases and 546 deaths up to now. Uh, so we are now in a critical uh, situation. So uh, again, uh, uh, although there are reduced numbers these days, like uh, the number of PCR testing also like uh, not that uh, uh, we can't happy about that because uh, around earlier that around January, like there were 18,000 uh, tests, but uh, now it has been reduced to around 6,000. So that's also increasing. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, last January, uh, December, we thought of ending this wave around April, but going at this rate, we might have to go uh, further two or three months. Uh, so tuberculosis and COVID, both are respiratory diseases, respiratory infections, but differently treated uh, infections. So both are involving lung parenchyma, but uh, COVID is usually like, uh, I mean, most of the developed uh, wealthy countries have interested uh, in COVID-19, but uh, still uh, throughout the world, tuberculosis is uh, neglected and it has been badly affected during this era. So, but having said that, like there are some similar uh, features of uh, TB and COVID-19. The overload of national health system is common to both and need of rapid diagnosis and public awareness is important for both diseases and uh, low, uh, lead to uh, social stigma and lack of knowledge and individual susceptibility uh, and lack of data sharing platforms for both diseases is common. But however, being uh, COVID is uh, uh, looked after well uh, uh, than TB and there's appropriate health surveillance system used to monitor and track the epidemic and fast adapt 
protection of national uh, policies to contain the epidemic is there. But uh, TB, on the other hand, lack of investments for national surveillance system and lack of consistent uh, national policies is observed. So, uh, so what are the challenges? Like, uh, this is a chest x ray of a uh, 17 uh, year old girl, uh, had cough for about two months duration and reluctant to come to seek medical advice uh, for two months due to stigma of COVID and a fear of getting COVID from a, a clinic or a hospital and ultimately ended up with hemoptysis and also uh, prolonged fever and admitted to the hospital. And if you can appreciate, uh, ended up with a large cavity. So uh, it's a, uh, her sputum was positive. So uh, that has happened. I mean, this is uh, from the national program. Like, uh, if you can notice, Sumu uh, described this very well. But uh, you notice, like, all these uh, uh, all cases, new cases, uh, all new cases, smear positive cases, all been uh, reduced in 2020. That means, like, uh, we are heading for a, a big uh, trouble problem uh, during next couple of years. Uh, so if there is a major disruption uh, in uh, TB case detection, could result an additional 400 lives lost. So uh, in 2018, uh, there was 1.49 million deaths uh, uh, in 2018. If there is a, a reduction of case detection throughout the world uh, by 50%, there will be 1.85 million estimated deaths in 2020. So, uh, so that will cost 400 lives. It's a big uh, burden throughout the world. So what are the challenges during COVID pandemics? So active TB case finding is affected and decrease uh, in case detection due to lockdown and certain other reasons. Uh, because uh, we couldn't go, uh, the staff, the medical professionals couldn't uh, read the uh, areas. Uh, the, uh, Patients are reluctant, were reluctant to uh, seek medical advices, reluctant to come to the hospital and chest clinics. And increasing workload on uh, medical staff, uh, also a problem like, uh, you know, uh, as you can remember, like uh, early part of the pandemic in Sri Lanka, like uh, the hospital staff, uh, there were cut down of staff, like only one third, uh, only half or two third of staff came to work. So that has affected our respiratory clinics and also uh, wards, uh, care, and detecting of TB patients. Uh, in addition, uh, we had to undergo quarantine, especially I can remember the Kaushal is there. Uh, the chest clinic, uh, there was a case, and uh, so uh, clinic was uh, closed, but that situation was managed nicely by the uh, program. And uh, at, uh, for a few days, like we had to close the chest clinic, Gampa. Uh, then availability of the PP and test for COVID-19 is important. Uh, early part of the pandemic, like uh, we had some problems with uh, doing uh, getting the microscopic services, uh, and we have to uh, go for a personal sponsors to find uh, PPEs. And our procedures uh, like bronchoscope uh, and thoracoscope uh, and uh, lung functions, all these uh, uh, services being badly affected. And DOT is a challenging with discharge of large number of uh, TB patients and ensuring adequate treatment and monitoring uh, throughout the TB therapy also uh, a challenge during this pandemic. And the programmatic disruptions are possible uh, uh, of transportation of sputum, biosafety, and use of uh, gene expert for COVID-19 testing uh, in some other countries as well, and monitoring uh, visits, uh, visits to re regions, training, and provision of psychological support, all been badly affected by the COVID pandemic. And the family screening is very important. Uh, uh, Sumudu uh, mentioned that uh, there were uh, less than 50% uh, contact tracing. So with the COVID situation, with the lockdown, and the people are reluctant to come to the clinics, so uh, contact uh, screening will be very badly affected during these two years. And availability of the diagnostic material for TB and medicines for TB and drug resistant TB 
and the procurement of diagnostic material for TB and medicines for TB and MDR TB will be affected because of the airports were closed and uh, how the problems in uh, Sri Lanka harbor also. So uh, these can be affected by the situation. And technical assistance to in-country missions is problematic uh, and virtual and remote support is not always possible, uh, especially like, like the countries like us. So what we need to do, we have to divide, to plan, divide a plan to what we need to do in the community and what we need to do in the hospital level. So community, we should ensure good communication and empower patients with adequate stocks of medicine, ensure staff safety with PPE and education with alternative tools like virtual uh, manner. And hospitals, uh, we started actually with the uh, College of Pulmonologists and uh, the national programs, like uh, we, we had a good uh, trial system, introduced a good guidelines. Uh, even Sri Lanka College of Pulmonologists introduced a, a management guideline for uh, COVID. Uh, and uh, we emphasize with the several meetings with the DG and uh, authorities, uh, health secretary, uh, we wanted to start some respiratory wards, uh, at least for temporary purpose, uh, that worked very well with some facilities like, you know, high flow oxygens, uh, uh, NIV, and ultrasounds, like uh, we could get, uh, give a good care for these patients. Uh, uh, and infectious disease ICUs are very important uh, because uh, these ICUs can be used for TB patients as well. And the staff safety in microscopy uh, centers, uh, labs, uh, we should provide uh, PPEs and uh, safety cabinets and all like to ensure the uh, good uh, detection services and en ensure safety procedures. You know, bronchos as you all know, bronchoscopy is a aerosol generating procedures and high risk procedures uh, of getting COVID also. And uh, we have to ensure safety during these procedures. So, Respiratory wards, uh, as I told, like uh, we started, uh, this is a respiratory ward in Gampa. After starting this ward, like uh, uh, we could uh, detect about 22 cases during like just three months in 2020. There were 22 TB patients rather than COVID. We detected more uh, TB patients, 22, uh, 22 patients out of these 22, 18 patients were uh, bacteriologically confirmed. So. Uh, so you can see the burden. Uh, and in this situation to overcome, like we can use digital health technologies, digital screening and diagnostic tools like uh, teleradiography, uh, radiology, uh, chest X-ray readers, laboratory connected diagnostics, and patient care and di uh, digital adherence technologies like digital adherence platforms, video supported treatment, uh, medication sleeves, smart pill boxes, and community engagement and awareness, uh, community-based monitoring tools, communications and social media. Social media is uh, uh, wide was widely used during this uh, COVID pandemic, and I think uh, we sh sh uh, should be able to do uh, uh, send our messages uh, of TV through these platforms. And uh, program management and digital tools like virtual meeting tools, we are currently doing. And e-learning and uh, clinician networks are, um, are practicing throughout the world during this uh, COVID pandemic. And community volunteers to help TB uh, patients and continue treatment at home. What they can do is uh, they can do virtual support, nutrition support, psychosocial support, economic support, and connect to TB programs and prevent stigma and discrimination. And some countries using community monitoring TB services like One Impact App uh, been used for some countries. Uh, uh, it is very valuable during this uh, period. And, and the private sector TB care, like virtual care for TB patients and what is the role of private pharmacies need to be discussed uh, in greater. So, so challenges in TB, like in COVID situation, what are the barriers to TB services, human right violations? Because uh, COVID uh, during early period, I personally feel like uh, human rights were violated uh, in our COVID patients. They have been abducted and uh, abruptly taken uh, from homes. Now that has been settled, luckily. 
Uh, so both diseases that human rights can be violated because at a clinic level or like your clinic level, uh, discrimination can happen. Uh, hospitals, uh, community, both like the uh, respiratory diseases are badly treated everywhere. So, uh, and TB stigma and barriers to uh, TB support services. So, so we can uh, uh, overcome that with good quality TB service are uh, available, accessible and acceptable to all and protection and promotion of human rights and good quality TB support services are accessible to, for all and education and elimination of TB stigma is very important. Uh, and priority in COVID-19 vaccine rollout. So uh, actually the priority was given to the dialysis patients, but uh, later on, like as request of Sri Lanka College of Pulmonologists and TB, the national program supported for that to give the priority for our uh, respiratory patients, uh, TB, the complicated TB patients, all TB patients, and uh, not only TB, uh, interstitial lung disease, uh, lung carcinoma, uh, COPD, and bronchiectasis. All these patients are very high risk of uh, COVID related complications because they, their lung parenchyma is already damaged. If they get the disease, um, they have high risk of uh, complication and deaths. So uh, that has been sorted out, uh, circular being issued recently and hope that our patients will get the vaccine soon. And uh, this is the national uh, data of vaccine and doses uh, 824,000, around 824,000 doses being given and 3.78 per 100 people uh, given the vaccine. Uh, and so the clock is ticking and NTB is a challenge during COVID pandemic, but courage can beat any challenge. So we have to get together. Let's unite and uh, fight and uh, fight for benefit of our people, especially the respiratory people and the TB patients. So for that, uh, it's time to test and treat uh, latent TB infections. It's time to speak up, it's time to end stigma, and it is time to strengthen TB education awareness among healthcare providers. So, uh, so we all should get together and work on to the NTB goal. Thank you very much. Mama Nihal, the Avadia Rogik Cutting 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 the Avadia Sayan in Sema Parikshava Kek, Excurna Parikshava Kerala, Poyagata Mata Shero gave and the Latino Kila. Eat a passive Pratikara of a letter, Laya Sayanate Mava Yumkala. Sama Nil Sharire Pratishakti, Aduan, the Avadia, Vakugaduroga, Ichai, Pilika, and Roga Valadi, Sherogi, Matuima, Avadan of a Vedi. Inisa Kalima Rogi, Handunagini, a Vedaka. Kalima Sherogi, Handunagan, a Pratikara Gatta Hinda. Sherogi Nita or Tamasukaragan, the Matapulva Muna. Sauke Matan Shesamagin, Sherog Mardanha, Lairo Gilban, the Jatka Vatasatani Panavida. I thank Dr. Bodhika Samasekar for sharing those valuable words with us. Now let's move on to a very important occasion official handing over of the final draft of latent TB infection guidelines of Sri Lanka. For that, on behalf of the guidelines committee, I would like to invite Dr. Ishanta Pereira. Consultant Respiratory Physician and Dr. Kaushali Rajpaksha, District TB Control Officer Gampaha, to come forward to the stage. In order to achieve NTP targets by 2035, National TB Program will be initiating latent TB scale up plan by providing TB preventive therapy for clinical risk groups and vulnerable groups from 2021. Therefore, on this special occasion, the official handover of the final draft of National Guideline on Management LTBI will be handed over by the representatives of the Guideline Committee to Dr. Hemanta Herat, Director, NPTCCD. Thank you very much, Dr. Hemanta Herat, Dr. Ishanta Pereira, and Dr. Kaushali Rajapaksha. Now let's have a look on an audio video clip based on a very true story. Mama Maya, Guru Variyak, 
මට ෂේ රෝගේ වැරඳිලා කියලා දැනගත්තම මම හොඳටම බය වුණා ප්‍රතිකාර නොගත් ෂේ රෝගියෙකු කහින විට කිමිතු මරණ විට රෝග කාරක විස බීජ වාතයට ඇතුළු වෙනවා මේ රෝගී පුද්ගලයෙක් හුස්ම ගන්නකොට මේ විස බීජ අපිට ඇතුළු වෙන්න පුළුවන් විස බීජ ඇතුළු වෙච්ච පමණින් අපි හැමෝටම රෝගී වැළඳෙන්නේ නැහැ එහෙම වැළඳුණත් මාස 6ක් නොකඩවා බෙහෙත් ගැනීමෙන් සම්පූර්ණයෙන්ම සුව කරගන්න පුළුවන් ෂරෝගේ අන්නයට බෝවීම වරක්වා ගන්න නම් කහින විට කිවිසුම් යන විට ලීන් සුවකින් හෝ වැලමිටින් මුහුණ ආවරණය කරගන්න ඕනේ සෙම් කෙල බඳුන් නිසි පරිදි බැහැර කරන්නත් ඕන ෂරෝග විස බීජ හිරු එලිය හමුවේ විනාශ වී යනවා ඒ නිසා නිවසට හොඳින් වාතාශ්‍රය ඉරෙලිය ලැබෙන්න සලස්වන්න ඕනේ ඩොක්ටර් දීපු උපදෙස් මම අකුරටම පිළිපැද්දා පෝෂණයෙන් පිරුණු ආහාර ගත්තා මාස 6ක් හරියටම බෙහෙත් බිව්වා ෂරෝගේ සම්පූර්ණයෙන්ම සනීප වුණා මේ ජයග්‍රහණය පසුපස තිබෙන රහස තමා මගේ ආදරණීය පෞල හා ගුරු කාර්ය මණ්ඩලය මට දීපු මානසික ශක්තිය ඔවුන් කිසි විටකත් මාව කොන් කරේ නැහැ හැම විටම ෂරෝගේ පරදන්නමට උදව් කළා සෞඛ්‍ය මාත්‍යංශය සමගින් ෂරෝග මර්ධන හා ලය රෝග පිළිබඳ ජාතික වැඩසටහනේ පණ විඩයක් ඔකේ සෝ දැට්ස් මායා හූ බැටල්ඩ් අගේන්ස්ට් ටීවී with that inspiring video clip we have come to end of today's program before winding up i would like to invite dr amali sena nayaka activity coordinator of health uh, education and promotion unit in pccd for delivering the word of thanks thank you very much good afternoon our most valued guests ladies and gentlemen it's a great privilege to propose a word of thanks on the on this special occasion i on behalf of the national program for tuberculosis control and chest diseases and ptccd extend a very heartly word of thanks to the deputy director general of public health services one dr sm arnold the speakers dr bodhika samrasekar consultant respiratory physician and dr sumudu hevage consultant community physician the president of the sri lanka medical association dr padma gunaratna the council members for giving this gracing this occasion with their knowledge and expertise and for the collaboration given we have been fortunate enough to be backed up by a team of very motivated and dedicated staff of npt ccd the director dr hemant hera the deputy director dr nirupa palewatta the community physicians Uh, senior registrar in health informatics the registrar in community medicine the medical officers and the other staff members who are excellent at their jobs and without their continuous dedication and support it would have been impossible to make this event a success thank you team and ptccd i also would like to express our sincere mm. gratitude mm. to uh, the members of the college of pulmonologists the college of community medicine uh, community physicians the college of microbiologists uh, and who officials for gracing this occasion my special thanks goes to dr dananje manamperi and mr pahan aberatna for volunteering to compose the melody singing and recording of the vivid song Finally I am grateful to all the media institutions for their support and consideration of tuberculosis burden in Sri Lanka by giving opportunity to aware general public free of charge so let's hope to end tb and create tb free sri lanka by 2035 thank you <laughs>